Hey everybody, it's The Van Show, and today we're talking to my friend, Joe R. Lansdale. Say hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> now, Joe, we, we got a couple questions for you. We want right. to know about you. Yeah. So first of all, tell us where you're from. I'm from Nacogdoches, Texas. That's in East Texas, behind the Pine Curtain. Ooh, Nacogdoches, I like that word. Yeah, me too. It just flows right off the tongue. Native American. Ooh, yeah, do you know what it means? Uh, it means Nacogdoches. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. So, Joe, we want to learn a little bit about you. You are an author, is that correct? I am an author. I'm also a writer. Same thing. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I know, go so by writer. Okay, author sounds you know, a little high for <laughs> yeah. that's, You're not the first. Uh, Kate DiCamillo told us the same thing. Yeah. She yeah. said, don't call, me, don't call me an author. Don't be called me an author. My name ain't author. I'm a writer. <laughs> so, how early on did you start writing? Four. You were four years old. I was four years old. I was reading comics. I wanted to write comics. I wanted to draw comics. And I did both. And I turned out I was a lousy artist. But I was a good storyteller. <laughs> And I liked that, so I just kept writing. And uh, as time went on, uh, you know, t and TV shows influenced me too, and books influenced me. And we had all kinds of comic books back then. There used to be a thing called Classics Illustrated. And those were made from famous books, and that led me to reading all those books and wanting to write more. Whoa, Classics Illustrated. So like you would get Withering Heights. Yes. The Illustrated well, yeah, you know, yeah, Moby Dick, uh, Huckleberry Finn, you name it. Very cool. Yeah, and so Three that, Musketeers. And so did you did you start off writing historical fiction comic books as a kid? No, I, I actually tried to write superheroes. I mean, I, I loved Batman and Superman. I'm a DC guy, you know. Oh, and, and so I grew up on those, and I, I tried to write my own versions of those or make up my own versions of uh, superheroes. But all of a sudden, I just veered off, and I started writing stories. First, science fiction, which, you know, I, I liked a lot then, still do. But I, I kind of got interest in other things then, historical stuff, crime horror, you name it. Wow, and it, so at what point um, in your writing did you go, you know what, I'm gonna do this for a career. I'm gonna try to make money doing this. Well, I don't think I thought about the money first, but when I was four, I wanted to do it for a career. I, as soon as I figured out somebody was actually writing this stuff and drawing this stuff, I said, I wanna do that. That's a great way. That way I don't have to work in the foundry or in the factory, which I did though, by the way, for a while. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah do that till you get where you can uh, write and make a living. So you, so you were working at a foundry and writing? No, well, not when I was four. Well, no, no. no. <laughs> no. Me and the domesticated hog were at the foundry. That's right. No, um, you waited until you were 10. Yeah, of course. No, but when I was, when I was a teenager, I began to uh, you know, work part-time, and then I worked full-time uh, my senior year at uh, Aluminum Chair Factory. Ooh. Which was, uh, yeah, I, I still wake up with nightmares sometimes thinking I have to go back to the aluminum chair factory. And it wasn't me that wrote all those books. It was somebody else. Oh, no. But it was me. Thank goodness. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds like a story right there. Yeah, You can it call is. it yeah. aluminum chair nightmare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so now, you've recently written a, a book with your daughter. I did. And Unfortunately, also, I don't have it here, but you, I did. You also did a, a graphic novel with your son. I did, and, and uh, we've done screenplays together, and he's done some screenplays on my work. And, of course, Casey's actually a singer, mostly, and she writes uh, songs, uh, and her producer is John Carter Cash, Johnny Cash's Ooh, son. Yeah. Cool. And so what's it like do, writing with your children? Like after you're writing by yourself for so many years, uh, doing a project well, with one Well, you know, actually when Casey was eight and Keith were, was 12, we wrote a story together for uh, a children's anthology for Random House. And huh. uh, yeah, yeah, it was called The Companion. It was about a scarecrow that was alive. Ooh. Yeah. Was it spooky? It's pretty spooky, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like but it, you know what? I, I work better with them than anybody else. I'm not much of a collaborator, really. And my daughter, uh, when she asked me first, uh, well, actually, I was asked to do a story with a collaboration for Christopher Golden. I turned it down. Then he went to Casey and said, why don't you talk to your dad about you two doing it together? And I turned it down again. Oh. And uh, then she wrote five pages and sent it to me. And I went, dang it, I had to finish that story. So I wrote <laughs> my five, and then she wrote another five. We looked up and we were writing together, and actually, it, it's pretty fun. Keith and I too. We we do screenplays together in comics, but Casey and I do fiction, and I, I like it. <laughs> and I like how your daughter knew exactly how to get you. Yeah, to do it. <laughs> yeah. Daughters know those things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're also a martial arts expert. That's right. A a uh, what's the word? Uh, soku so soke soki soki soki. Mm -hmm. That's right, and you were inducted into the U.S. Martial Arts Hall of Fame recently. And the International Martial Arts Hall of Fame, but who's counting? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> international Martial Arts Hall of Fame. And the U.S. Yeah, right. Well, All right, get them both. Well, I mean, doesn't international include the U.S.? Yes, and domesticated hogs. <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> so, so anyway, what got you started in martial arts? Actually, when I was 11, uh, my father was a boxer and a wrestler. He was like 42 when I was born and my mother was 38. So they had gone through the Great Depression. And my father used to ride the rails from town to town and box and wrestle in fairs. So he knew a little bit about that quite a bit about that and so he got me interested in that and I started doing it and then it led to judo and hapkido and kempo and taekwondo and Thai boxing and oh my gosh a, a big big list jiu-jitsu you, you name it and yeah. so I've been doing 55 years now and you you've created your own martial arts I did Xin Chuan Xin Chuan Xin Chuan I like that what does that mean spirit fist spirit fist Ooh, that sounds tough and cool scary huh I, well yeah, yeah, yeah. spirit fist now, uh, you brought a couple books with you today. I, uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, can we talk a little bit about uh, one of them? Yeah, this is called Blood and Lemonade, and this is a collection of short stories about characters of mine, uh, Hap Collins and Leonard Pine, when they were young. Oh. The books uh, a series is the, that I have out, is there are 11 of them, and those take place when they're older. And there's a TV series that just ended, it had a three-season run called Hap and Leonard. What am I writing right now? I am actually proofing a novel that I just finished about Ned the Seal. It's the third novel in a Ned the Seal series. And uh, it's about a brain enhanced seal who um, has uh, pretty interesting adventures. And it, it includes a lot of other stuff. It's, it's actually an adult uh, kind of fiction and uh, there's a possibility of a animated TV show, but I believe it when it happens. Batman. I mean, but, I mean, not an existing one, a, like a, a new one. A new one. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Now, that's different. You know, my son and I just made up one called Big Lizard. <laughs> and it's about a guy who transforms into a big lizard. But the reason he does was kind of, uh, un, you know, not, not, a, not a good situation. So I don't know if I want to be that guy or not. <laughs> you know, a lot, of, a lot of the superheroes that I've come up with, they have kind of like tough backgrounds. This guy, he, he lives in a theme park. So uh, it starts off, um, it starts off kind of odd because he's in an explosion with a chick chicken factory. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, a lot of chickens, a lot of feathers. Yeah, got ugly. The martial arts move is you use the one arm puppet. Oh yeah. Ah, he just got one arm. That's right. Um, well, that yeah. You, how about that? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see what happened. Yeah, I got I got that little piece of lint. <laughs> that, I didn't even know humans could move that fast. Wow, you are super powered. That was great. So I, I need to ask you a mm. bit of a fanboy question here. Okay. Did you get to meet Don Coscarelli and work alongside him? Don Coscarelli is a buddy. In fact, he wrote me today and he's a granddad today. No, congratulations, yeah. Don. It may have been yesterday too, but he wrote me and said, oh, look here, and showed me a picture of his son's um, holding the new baby. Aww. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, I know Don, I know Bruce, I know all those people. I'm cool, man. Oh, no, no, I, I don't doubt it. I'm hip. I just wondered, were you on set and working alongside of them? I wasn't working alongside them. I was there when they were filming a lot of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, it was great fun. I, on all of the things that have mine have been filmed, I've been on the set some. Oh, cool. Uh, and like, like for the TV series for the first season, I was on the set nearly the whole time. And uh, you know, like I said, I've, it's one reason I'm going to end up directing because I've been on lots of sets, and a lot of my friends are directors. And you know, I, if people say, "Would you rather direct or write?" I'd rather write. But you know, why not spread the talent around if you got any? Yeah, and right. If I don't have any, I'll just go. Well, it was as bad as Stephen King's movie. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the only one he did. Oh, uh, that he directed? Yeah, it was the Maximum Overdrive is based on trucks, which is a great short did story. Did he direct that one? He did. Oh, wow. Well, even he says, can't wow, win them all. not so good. No. <laughs> and he didn't want to do it again. Uh, no, it's much easier. I don't believe in the muse, and I don't believe you wait on inspiration because you're it. You know, it comes from you. I don't think it comes from the ether or anywhere else. Uh, at least that's my view. I get up in the morning and I say, you the muse, you better get to work. <laughs> and so I sit down and it goes and I, I love doing it I you know a lot of people tell me all their horror stories about it and of course when you're starting out I had some you know tough times learning it and but you got to want to do it and for me showing up is the answer I show up every day I don't wait till I'm in the mood you know because if I was in the mood I'd be I'd be really hungry right now because I <laughs> I have to and my house would not you know I wouldn't be there they would be putting me out on the curb so you tend to give it regular exercise when you have uh, bills and things, but I love it. I enjoy it so much. To me, I, I got my dream. When I was four years old, I wanted to be a writer, and I am one. 
I wanted to do martial arts when I was 11, and I did, and still am. So I'm a very fortunate person. But that said, I worked for it. I don't believe in luck in the classic sense of that word, good or bad. I believe you do your, do your work, and you have a goal, and you go after it. And, uh, you know, I'm not interested in being famous or rich. Uh, I wanted to do this work. But the money has to be there, of course, you to make a living. And I got into it, and all of a sudden, I'm actually making money. I'm actually, you know, I've got as much fame as I need. And all of that came not because I was looking for it, but because I wanted to write. I wanted to create. And for me, that was the most important decision I ever made. And, I, and although I worked every kind of job, you can, I was a janitor, I was the aluminum chair, fa <laughs> aluminum chair factory. I was an aluminum chair factory. I was, worked in the rose fields. I worked in the potato fields. I worked, I, I, I farmed, I plowed with a mule actually. Whoa. You know, I did all that stuff to make a living and I wrote. And then one day, I was writing enough and selling enough, I didn't have to do that anymore. And I walked off the janitor job and never looked back. So, so Joe, <laughs> it's been awesome having you on the show. Well, thank you very much. It's been nice being here. Heck yeah. Now, we got one last thing we do before we go. Okay. We're both going to look in the camera and say goodbye. You ready for that? All right, which one are we going to look at? Uh, this one right ahead. We're going to go do the wide camera. That's right, yeah. the wide shot. You All ready? Right, yeah, lean in. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Goodbye. Goodbye.